Creality showcased quite a bit at Form Next this year. Starting with the complete line of scanners they now offer, like the Otter, the Raptor, and all the others. And at the fair, they also scanned a few objects live. You could then see the results on the screen. The guy from Di Prima was also there again, and he said it's pretty cool what they're doing, and where we talked a bit more about it. Besides the scanners, there was also the current laser from Creality on display, safely enclosed, of course. Yeah, otherwise it would be way too dangerous at the fair. And there was also the end of 5 Max. I no longer understand Creality. We have the end of 3 series, we have the end of 5 series, we have the K series, and we have the K series. The K series makes the end of 5 obsolete. I wish for a K Max, C variant, without side panels, like the KSE instead of the Ender 5. Introducing models like K, K Max, and K Plus, each as an SE variant without panels, avoids customer confusion with too many models and features. It would be really nice if you did that, to stay in line, so to speak, and then say, okay, from next year there will be the complete K series, and then present the individual models and say, okay, there is a K, there is a K Max, and there is a K Plus, and each of them again as an SE variant, so without panels or something like that. For me, that would be a bit cleaner and more streamlined, that they could somehow manage that, instead of throwing out so many models again and confusing the customers a bit with all the features and everything. But I don't want to complain too much. I also had the chance at the fair to take a closer look at the K+. That was basically the highlight that was standing at every corner of the Creality booth. And I'm really grateful to Zora for explaining all of this to us and also to a user of the K+, whom Creality invited to be at the booth during the fair. I think that's really cool. He also said yes and then showed us all the little tricks at the fair. Afterwards in the video, what works well and what doesn't. So for example, like the easily accessible PTFE tubes from the buffer, the CFS at the bottom, for example. Just, yeah, he also designed something of his own with the Creality logo and arranged it in a way that you could see the colors, how the color change works and everything. But for you, there's now the interview with Zora. And he explained to us a bit about the pros and cons of the printer. But for you, there's now the interview with Zora. Hello, hello Zora. Hi. You're here to show me the K2 Plus. Yeah. Our community is begging for a, a small overview of the printer. Okay. Um, what can you tell us about the machine? Uh, so the K2 Plus is Creality 2024, the newest uh, multicolor printer, and it's the first multicolor printer of Creality. So mm -hmm. that is uh, lots of people, lots of users wondering it. And first of all, the price is very friendly. It's only yeah. yeah. For what you get, it's friendly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And with the CFS is the important thing. And first of all, the build volume of the K2 Plus is 350 by 350 by 350. So it can provide you uh, whatever you are working for a studio or daily life or some industrial, like factory things. It can print a lot of small things at one time. And you can print more colorful things like the cosplay users. Yes. That would be perfect. Okay. And uh, I think the interesting is the RFID filaments with the CFS. Yes. So it's uh, have our new filament type. So you quickly grabbed some filament. Yep. And this filament has a and this filament has a NFC tag in there. Yeah. Right. Have a this one here, and okay. you can close to this part RFID and B, and the CFS will automatically recognize what mm. uh, kind of the materials and what the color and how much that is still have okay. in the system. So that is very. So you can use the NFC tag or the RFID tag with yep. filament on the spool motor on the side and in the CFS. Yeah. Okay, that's great. And also you can use other like uh, other companies' filaments or other like the Euro filaments like uh, Hyper PR is something and you just need to modify I did the things in the screen yeah. and just like that CFS. Okay, so you can program your own text. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. That would be great for filament manufacturers like uh, uh, here in Germany, Recycling Topic. Would it work? Maybe. Okay. <laughs> then you have something special in this printer, which is not uh, not in every printer today. It's an uh, active heated build chamber. Yeah. How high can it go? From 60 10? degrees. Okay, that's good. I can print the AB as well. Okay. Yeah. I mean, with 60 degree, you can print materials like uh, PAHT, mm -hmm. uh, PA12. Yeah, but but recently, this project cannot print the TPO yet. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because it's a pre uh, mm. pre production unit. Yeah, maybe, but okay. Yeah. Then one question: uh, Where's the USB port if I want to insert some uh, USB stick for local file transfer? Let's yes. say. Oh, there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but it's oh. hide it. So. Mm -hmm. so you can just use your USB driver here. Okay. Oh. You so you use the USB oftenly. Uh, when I get a printer that I not yet have um, added to my network, mm -hmm. careful please, uh, which I have not added to my network yet, yeah. uh, especially if I'm working, if I have a printer which is only working via Wi-Fi, mm, yeah. and I got problems because my printers are in a room yeah, three yeah. rooms away and uh, uh, Wi-Fi is not working correctly. But I guess this printer has a Ethernet port, is it right? Definitely at okay. the back of the printer. Yeah. I like this. Yeah. I like this. Um, what can you tell me else about the CFS? You, you told on your 10th anniversary that it will be compatible later on with other printers. Other printers? Yeah. Which printers? Uh, first of all, the K1 series, like K1, K1, C, K1 Max. Okay. And the N3 V3 series is in the plan because if you want to modify your printer working with the CFS, you need to change a lot of accessories okay. to work with. And the reality is uh, creating a package, like uh, whatever the things you need to change will in this box and will be available on the store so the users can buy the box and to edit it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then one question in the community. I know that's not fair, yeah. but will the CFS be available or compatible with any Clipper printer out there? Mm. Because your, your, your operating system is open source. Yeah. Um, is there any plan to, re to, to make it open source that you can use it with any Clipper printer? I didn't get a confirmation from the department, okay. but I think maybe in the future we can have this plan. Because that would be great for okay. the community to... That modify. would be great, yeah. 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 So, what do we need else to know about this printer? When will it be released? Uh, this is uh, already official on sale now. Yeah. Uh, and the pre-sales orders is already on the shipping now. And okay. uh, some of our users already got it. And okay. uh, maybe at this end of the month or of um, December, uh, the pre-orders or, uh, user will get the Q2 Plus. Okay. Yeah. And it's, you can buy the CFS readily without the K1 Q2 Plus. Okay. And yeah. And when do you plan to release the adaption kit for the V3 series and mm. the K1 series? I think at Is there a release plan? Um, the fastest time period may be December or next year, I think. Okay. Because yeah, they need to test it for yeah. sure. And then we can give our users to them. Okay, yeah. great. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. I will get you some B-roll of the machine because I know you like it. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you so Have much. a nice form next. Oh, that's See great. you next time. Thank you. Now you've at least gotten a rough idea of the K+. As I said, I'm taking care of getting a review unit as soon as possible. We can test the whole thing thoroughly here in the studio. Just forgive me, even Mpox has admitted it. Yeah, yeah, I'm still waiting for mine too. Unfortunately, there are no review units being released at the moment. I know you're already itching to go. You're all raring to get started. I get messages on Discord pretty much, multiple times a week. Hey, do you have the thing already? Can you recommend it? Because I'm thinking about getting the thing at the trade show, I can tell you it made a good impression. The color changes were clean, so that means you didn't see any color bleeding or anything like that, where the colors mixed into other colors. Alignment, yeah, that can always happen if the nozzle hasn't been cleaned properly. It already made a good impression that you have the individual filters in there and could show that the build space heating made a nice impression overall. The print head is of course completely new, a bit higher. And I also think it's great that the filament sensor is now included in the print head. So you have a CFS up top that pulls the filament in, just like with the MMU from Prusa. And you can tell, okay, the filament has been pulled in. Then when the print head starts to take over the feeding of the filament, it can say, yeah, okay, I have the material and you can let it go up top, so to speak. For comparison, for example, with the QC, or rather, with the whole K-series, they attach the filament sensor somewhere at the back of the frame. I don't find that very optimal. It's pretty simple when the filament runs out, meaning it's empty. You end up with a strand of filament that's no longer usable. And of course, I would wish for that to be a print head up there. They solved that, and I think that's great. And I'm excited about the device, just like you are. I can hardly wait to get my hands on the thing. I can hardly wait to get my hands on the CFs and test them.
And once I have all of this here, we'll also do a big comparison where we compare all the multicolor systems with each other. So that means coprint, that means the AMS, that means the MMU, that means the ACE from any cubic, that means the CFS and the palette. We'll compare them all with each other. Then I'll have all the devices here and I can show you all of them and point out all the pros and cons. And I can tell you which device is good, better or worse in which areas compared to the others. But yeah, that was my overview of the current status of Creality. I hope you liked it. If so, I would be super happy if you give the video a thumbs up and if you subscribe to the channel so you won't miss any more videos from me. And of course, I also want to thank my channel members and the Patreons who I now have in such large numbers. And last but not least, I also want to thank my sponsor PCB Bay. With my channel members, with the Patreons and with the sponsor, it's of course possible for me to go to such a form next and report back for you so you can get the news directly from there. And in that sense, hold the line, happy printing and bye.